So most cells can use proteins as a source of energy. So how do most cells take these proteins and use them as a source of energy? Well, first we hydrolyze those peptide bonds, releasing these amino acids. So we can use these amino acids as a source of energy as long as we get rid of this amine waste product. As long as we can get rid of this amine group, we're left with this carbon backbone, which can be used to enter central metabolism to create ATP. So when we get rid of this amine group, essentially what we do is we throw it onto alpha ketoglutarate. So then alpha ketoglutarate gains that amine group. So now we have that glutamate with that waste nitrogen product. And not just that, we could catabolize other biomolecules with nitrogen molecules and also throw it onto that glutamate to form glutamine. So now we have this glutamine with all this waste nitrogen. And other cells do this differently. For example, skeletal muscle and skeletal tissue, they can also use proteins for energy. Again, they hydrolyze those peptide bonds, releasing amino acids. And again, we can use these amino acids for energy as long as we get rid of that amine group. As long as we get rid of that amine group, we have this carbon backbone, which can enter central metabolism and be used to create ATP. So the way we get rid of that amine group is we throw it onto pyruvate. So we take that amine group, throw it onto pyruvate, forming alanine. So skeletal muscles, when they process proteins for energy, they take all that waste nitrogen and essentially throw it onto alanine. So what do these cells do with all this waste nitrogen products? Well, they send it to the liver because only the liver can safely dispose of that nitrogen. And essentially the way they do that is they throw that nitrogen onto glutamate. Then glutamate can go through this neat process where they get rid of that am uh, amine group in the form of ammonia. Then that ammonia can enter the urea cycle to be converted into urea. And urea is a very benign, non-toxic form of nitrogen, which can simply enter the bloodstream, be filtered out in our glomeruli, and excreted through our urine. So only the liver can safely dispose of this nitrogen. So therefore, when these cells are, are, are using these proteins as a source of energy, they need to take all that, that waste nitrogen and essentially send that waste nitrogen to the liver. For example, skeletal muscle, they take that alanine with that waste nitrogen and send that alanine to the liver. Now, once that alanine enters the liver, they take that amine and essentially throw it onto alpha ketoglutarate. So then alpha ketoglutarate gains that amine group forming this glutamate. And then again, we know once glutamate has that nitrogen, they can go through this process to safely dispose that nitrogen in the form of this urea cycle. So the point is we want to use this amino acid for energy. So, but to do that, we get rid of this amine group. So we first throw it onto alanine, then we send that to the liver. Then again, we eventually throw it onto glutamate, which can go through this process to safely dispose of that nitrogen. So what about other cells? What about most other tissues? Well, again, they have that glutamine with all that waste nitrogen. They send to the liver. Now, once that glutamine is in the liver with all that waste nitrogen, they can go through a similar process where they go through one step getting rid of this amine, this amine in, in the form of ammonia. And then, and then we form glutamate, which will get rid of this amine in the form of ammonia. Now we have all this ammonia, which we know can safely enter the urea cycle to con be converted into urea to be safely exposed out of the body. So the point is, when our cells and tissues want to use proteins for energy, they create a lot of waste nitrogen products. So we, the safe way we dispose of that nitrogen is we send all that waste nitrogen to the liver, which can safely process it and convert it into urea. But what's important to realize are certain type of nucleic acids, for example, purines, we, we catabolize and get rid of these nitrogen waste products in the form of uric acid, which can then again be exposed out of the body. But the point is the vast majority of the nitrogen waste from our cells we send to the liver, which can safely be exposed out of the body. So what exactly is going on through this urea cycle? We know this urea cycle takes this ammonia, which is toxic. Ammonia can be very dangerous for the cell, for the body. However, the liver can safely take that ammonia. You can enter it into the urea cycle to form this non-toxic urea to leave the cell. So what's going on in this urea cycle? Well, again, let's say we're in a liver cell, in a, in a hepatocyte. So we have our cytoplasm in our mitochondria. And again, we know we have that glutamate which, with all that waste nitrogen, which came from different cells in the bodies. So, so what do we do that with that waste nitrogen? Well, that glutamate enters the mitochondria. Now, once it enters the mitochondria, it gets rid of that amine group, which we already explained earlier. So we get rid of that amine group in the form of ammonia. So now what do we do with all this toxic ammonia once, once we're in the mitochondria? Well, that toxic ammonia will react with this molecule, this, this bicarbonate.
So again, th this ammonia will react with this bicarbonate to form this carbamyl phosphate, which again has that waste nitrogen in, in, in the form of this carbamyl phosphate. Now, once we form this compound, we react it with ornithine. We react it with ornithine. So this ornithine essentially reacts with this carbamyl phosphate to essentially form citrulline. So now this citrulline has that waste nitrogen. Remember, this was all that waste nitrogen which came from cells all throughout the body. So that waste nitrogen, we essentially throw onto ornithine forming citrulline. Now that citrulline leaves the mitochondria, so now it's in the cytoplasm, and we react with an ATP molecule forming forming this, this cit citral AMP intermediate, which again has, has that amine waste product. And then again, we release a pyrophosphate, but again, we essentially form this intermediate. Once we form this intermediate, we can react it with an aspartate amino acid, which also has waste nitrogen, which came from different cells in the body. So now we add this aspartate molecule forming this, this arginosusitate, sustenate. So now we form this molecule, but again, keep in mind the big picture. We have nitrogen waste, which came throughout all different cells in the body, which we sent to the liver. So a lot of that nitrogen waste is converted into this ammonia, which we essentially throw onto citrulline. So citrulline has this waste nitrogen, which came out through cells throughout the body forming this molecule, then we take this nitrogen, which also came from waste nitrogen throughout the body. So we take this nitrogen and also throw it on to, to this intermediate, forming this arginosusinate, which has these waste nitrogen molecules, which came from cells all throughout the body. So once, once we form this intermediate, we essentially go through a reaction where we get rid of this group, releasing it in the form of fumarate. So we get rid of this group, so again, we get rid of this group forming this arginine. Now, once we form this arginine, this is where the magic happens. Now, once we form this arginine, we have this group, which again has those two nitrogen waste products, and we get rid of this group in the form of urea. We get rid of this group in the form of urea. Now we formed urea, which we know is non-toxic, which can leave the hepatocyte, enter the bloodstream, and be filtered out and excreted through our urinary system and through our urine. So again, we, we take this group, we get rid of it in the form of urea, and what we're left with is ornithine, which can go through the whole cycle over again. But again, remember the big picture idea of what's going on. We have all that waste nitrogen products from all different cells all throughout the body. We send that waste nitrogen product to the hepatocyte. And we send that waste nitrogen product through different means. But the point is we take that waste nitrogen, we send it to the hepatocyte, we take that waste nitrogen and we throw it on to form glutamate, now, this glutamate with that waste nitrogen products essentially enter the, hepatos the, the mitochondria, release that, that amine group in the form of ammonia, and we can take that waste ammonia, which came through cells all throughout the body, we essentially throw it onto citrulline, and then again, through this process, then we can eventually get rid of it in the form of urea. But we also have this waste nitrogen product, which came from cells all throughout the body, which we also threw on. So again, the point is, we take all this waste nitrogen, we throw it into molecules in this cycle, which can eventually take that waste nitrogen, get rid of it in the form of urea, which can safely be exposed out of the body. But what's going on with this aspartate? Where did this nitrogen waste come from? Well, again, remember, we take that nitrogen, we, we essentially, we already explained earlier in the video how we throw it on the glutamate. So once we form this glutamate, we explain how it can enter the hepatocyte and get rid of that that amine in the form of ammonia. However, sometimes in other contexts, um, this glutamate takes that ammonia, that, that amine group, and essentially, instead, that glutamate takes that amine group and throws it onto oxaloacetate. So it takes that amine group and throws it onto oxaloacetate. So oxaloacetate gains that amine group, forming aspartate. So now we have this aspartate, which also has that nitrogen, which again came from this nitrogen, which came from waste from different cells. So now this aspartate essentially can essentially now enter into the cycle to also be exposed, that that nitrogen can also be exposed through urea. And it's important to realize that this was actually occurring in the mitochondria. I just, I, I couldn't draw the mitochondria large enough. But again, the point is, the, the big picture idea, 
is this urea cycle, which occurs in hepatocytes, is a safe way to expose nitrogen and excrete that nitrogen out of the body through urea. So we take that waste nitrogen, normally from, from the catabolism of amino acids, but also through the catabolism of other biomolecules with nitrogen molecules, we send all that nitrogen to the hepatocyte, then we take that waste nitrogen and through different means, we enter it into the cycle, which can eventually get rid of that nitrogen waste product in the form of urea, which can safely be exposed out of the body.